I've been asked before and I was asked again recently what I can read on my Snellen chart when wearing my differentials. Hi, I'm Jem and I'm following Jake Steiner's end myopia method to get back to 2020 vision and life without glasses. It's all based on science, not magic, and if you want more information, I'll pop some links in the description down below. A number of times, fellow people on the end myopia journey have asked me, what can I see on the Snellen chart when I'm wearing my differentials? We know that when we're wearing our normal eyes, we're aiming to see eh, approximately 2030, maybe 2040, maybe even 2025. It depends how much blur we like to use. But with the differentials, Jake doesn't really talk about what we should be seeing on our Snellen chart when wearing them. So what are we aiming for here? There is a reason why Jake doesn't talk about what we're trying to see on our Snellen chart when wearing differential glasses. And that is because in differentials, the Snellen chart is kind of irrelevant. The thing that is much more important when we're wearing differentials is the distance to our screen or our book or whatever close-up thing we're doing. For differentials, our goal is to put our edge of blur at where our computer screen is. And the thing with blur is that having different corrections, increasing or decreasing your correction, doesn't just turn up the blur a little bit or turn it down a little bit like volume if you're listening to music. Diopters don't quite work this way. Let's talk about music and volume for just a moment. Imagine that you have a speaker and it is playing music. You have someone standing right next to the speaker and you might have someone standing six meters away from the speaker. Nonetheless, whether you turn the volume up or down, both people will hear the difference between a louder volume and a quieter volume. The person standing right next to the speaker might hear the sound the clearest, the loudest, the best, and the person standing a bit further away perhaps won't hear it as well when you turn it quiet, but they'll still hear it, it'll just be less. Diopters don't work this way. Instead of just adjusting the clarity up and down when you're changing your diopters up and down, what it's actually doing is shrinking your clarity bubble. So it would be like, to go back to the speaker analogy, someone standing right near the speaker and someone standing 10 feet away. And when you turn the volume down, instead of it getting quieter, smoothly that everyone can hear, the distance that the sound reaches comes in. So at some point you turn it down and the person 10 feet away would be outside of that bubble of sound. But the person near the speaker would be still inside that bubble of sound. Now I know if you're far enough away from a sound you don't hear it, but it's kind of like a gradual fade out. There's no clear distinct edge to the bubble of sound, where suddenly, plop, you're just outside the bubble, plop, you're back inside the bubble. But diopters work far more like this. This is the diopter bubble that Jake talks about in End Myopia, and it is also significant for the edge of blur. So the edge of blur is kind of the edge of this bubble for you. Now it's not a hard line that you could cut with a knife. Obviously there's some transition room. That is why when you're measuring your diopters through the centimeters to blur end myopia diopter calculator online, sometimes it can be a little bit unclear as to exactly when you're meant to stop and measure. But just because the edge is a soft edge, not a hard edge, doesn't mean there is not an edge. When you're wearing differentials, you want that edge of blur to be around where your computer screen is. So that at your computer screen, you're right on that small transition area between clarity and blur. And that's gonna be at, I don't know, 40 centimeters, 50 centimeters, 60 centimeters, 80 centimeters, depending on how strong your differentials are compared to what your full correction would need to be. But if say around 60 centimeters is your edge of blur in your differentials, then six meters is gonna be well outside your edge of blur. And six meters is where a normal Snellen chart would be. Which means that when you're wearing your differentials and trying to read from your Snellen chart, probably you won't see anything. You might not be able to read any of the lines. Of course, this all depends on how bad your myopia is to begin with, how strong or weak your differentials are, and maybe just who you are as a person. I don't know, eyes are different. They're unique, right, in some ways. Other ways, they're pretty standard. So for me, without my differentials, the biggest letter on my Snellen chart, which is I think at 2200, 
is a blob of blur. Actually, lately it's been going a little better. I'm starting to see results there, but this whole journey so far, it's just been a fuzz, a shadowy fuzz. I wouldn't even be able to tell you that it was an E if I did not already know. And when I put on my differentials and look at my cell and chart, I mean, maybe the blur changes in some way, just slightly, but it doesn't become readable. It's still a blob of blur. And yet when I put on my normalized, I can read down to the 2025 line maybe the 2020 line. So this might not be the case for everyone. And if you have a different experience, I would love to hear about it. I know that there is a website, which I will put in the description down below, that describes the different diopters of correction required versus how much you can read on the Snellen chart. And it seems to imply that if you need a minus 1.25 correction, that you should be reading the 2070 line which you'd think would mean that if you have normalized glasses on or full correction glasses on that allow you to read the 2020 line and then you decrease that by 1.25 diopters, which is a reasonable decrease for a differential pair of glasses, it would imply that you could still read the 2070 line. Similarly, it suggests that if you need a minus 1.5 correction, which you are not wearing, so wearing differentials then that are undercorrected by minus 1.5, that you should be able to read the second line on your Snellen chart. So maybe you have this experience, but I don't. That is not how I experience my Snellen chart while wearing differentials. Please let me know in the comments how you experience it because, you know, I've only got my experience to go from because as we said, Jake doesn't really talk about this because it's irrelevant and not particularly helpful and potentially if other people experience it as I do, not really a thing, reading your selling chart with differentials. But since people keep asking me and that's my answer, there you go, I'd love to hear what your answer is. So please let me know down in the comments and also do remember to like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Let the YouTube algorithm know that these videos are worth watching and I really hope they are. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week. Bye. And I don't know about for you, but for me, no, hang on. There is a buzzy, buzzy fly. Just land already. Why do you want to go that way? Would you let me let you out? I'm happy to let you out if you'll go out. Cool. It's no better than a cat. Doesn't know if it wants out or in, for goodness sake. <coughs> or whether you're standing 10 feet away. Wow, I'm talking in feet now. I'm not actually American. And potentially 